segment, we'll be exploring the emotional aspects of personality development and teenagers influenced by both individualist and collectivist societies. This is Michael. He is a national soccer champion, captain of his team for three years, and MVP for four years. He has grown up in Jacksonville, Florida for his entire life and has been picked to play for the University of North Carolina Division I soccer team this fall. He practices soccer over 40 hours a week and aspires to be an Olympian soccer player. How would you describe yourself, Michael? I would say I'm very competitive. I love soccer and I want to be the best and I'll do whatever it takes. What does it mean to be the best? Ultimately, I want to be rich and famous. I want people to know who I am and I want to be the best. Uh, I've gotten a bunch of scholarships from top colleges, so I know I'm on the right track. One would assume so, but is being talented really all it takes to be successful? Many of Michael's teammates consider him controlling, selfish, and one even saying, quote, he's too arrogant for his own good. This is one of Michael's teammates, Dimitri. He was raised in Russia and is not as successful a soccer player as Michael, although he has different viewpoints on teamwork and success. Our journalist was able to speak to Michael's mother and ask her a few questions. So how do you describe Dimitri? Well, he's a really nice boy. Um, he likes to put the good of others in the forefront of his mind. He works really collectively in order to achieve a common goal so that everybody can benefit. Um, he really prefers to have everybody take the glory rather than just him. And he's a very cooperative kid. Although Dimitri isn't the best player on the team, he is often talked about. His teammates describe him as shy, but a generally friendly person. He doesn't get much playing time, but he definitely gets most of the cheers. He is by no means a bad player, but both him and Michael play striker, and Michael is simply a better player. To analyze the emotional aspect of personality, we watched one of the team's games. However, this must have been an anomalous game. It was often Michael who made the mistakes, despite the team's win. We caught up with our young athletes after the game. So Michael, congrats on the game. How do you think you did? Well, I didn't play that well. My leg cramped and the sun was in my eyes. You know what? Just, just, just get this out of my face. Congratulations, Dimitri. How do you think the game went? Uh, I think the game went really well. I mean, personally, I didn't get the most playing time, but it was a team effort. The team played really well. We played cohesively. We were passing. We, I mean, we were just doing everything right and there's no better team that I'd rather be with. So here we have two very successful young athletes with two very different emotional reactions to the same situation. What might have caused this? The answer lies in sociocultural psychology. Michael has grown up in an individualist society where the goals of an individual come before the goals of a group. Being raised this way has taught him to only take responsibility for himself, therefore leaving others behind. Success in individualist societies is often measured by how far one can achieve fame and stand out. Growing up in a competitive society such as this has obviously molded Michael into a bossy player and to display consequent emotions of anger, frustration, and selfishness. Conversely, Dimitri has been raised in a collectivist society where the group goals come before personal goals. Dimitri has learned to take responsibility in being part of a larger group. Collective societies measure success by a person's loyalty to a team or group, being a helpful part of a whole, and desiring success for everyone. There are no specific well-known individuals who emulate this, thus proving the point. By being raised in a collectivist society, Dimitri has grown into a team player that wishes the best for everyone, and not only himself.